uh, get started here with it. Some other people can just catch the uh, catch it <clears throat> catch it coming into it. I don't want to keep you guys too late. These are supposed to be no more than one hour. So anyway, guys, let's start up. I want to welcome you uh, to the May twenty fourth, twenty twenty one REI USA presentation. Uh, this is basically going to be an introduction to short sale profits. I am the super group leader for the group called Short Sale Profits uh, with it. And, um, you know, I'm going to be teaching you every single month, um, although I'm limited to one hour, um, on short sales and how to do them in this current economy with it. So I'll go through a lot of things um, in this presentation. Feel free to throw your questions into the chat box. Uh, I'll try to catch them as we go along or, uh, you know, may uh, catch them all at the end. I got to kind of monitor two screens here and uh, chew gum at the same time. So uh, anyway, um, like I said, throw your contact info in the chat box and, you know, you may find people in the same city that you're located at uh, through REI USA. So this is a free presentation. Uh, you know, this is uh, going to be recorded. Uh, I think they're only kept up on the website for a certain period of time. So you don't want to wait too long. Get out there and go through all my recordings that are out there now. They each build on each other. Uh, and go into a different level of detail. So I kind of have to, you know, do one hour's worth and then do a different topic on a different time uh, here. And so after my presentation last month on actually showing you the technique on how to use the internet to find where these foreclosure short sale people are, which is very important. A lot of people wanted to me to come back and kind of talk about what short sales are. Um, you know, how do you talk to the seller? A little bit more details about them so you would sound you know smarter with the seller so you can kind of tell them why they need to do a short sale so that's kind of what my presentation is going to be here uh, do you want to say if you want the slides uh, text short to my uh, phone number here that's my cell 636-685-2990 and uh, i can send you these slides uh, so that you don't have to because i'm going to fly through this uh, this is part of a much larger presentation that uh, as a <clears throat> chemical engineer, I try to boil it down into one hour and I'm not real good at that. I know short sales, but I'm not uh, necessarily real great at uh, presenting and talking smoothly and making pretty PowerPoints. That's not my forte, but short sales it is. So, you know, you can get the uh, uh, slides for it so you uh, don't have to take all the notes with it. Uh, let me uh, go ahead and give you a little bit of uh, background as to who I am. So all that legal stuff there, you know, I'm not an attorney, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a real estate agent either. You do not need to be a real estate agent to do short sales. Um, I don't play one on TV. Uh, I'm not even an actor. Uh, no part of this presentation written or verbal is meant to be tax or legal advice. You know, this is all just my opinion, interpretation, my experience with what I've done with short sales over the past 10 years with it. Um, you know, I am the founder of Short Sale Profits and the founder of thedavidrandolph.com. Uh, davidrandolph.com was taken by somebody else. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? And somebody said, but wait, aren't you the David Randolph? Yeah, I'm the David Randolph. Okay, so take that website out. So we grabbed that website, thedavidrandolph.com. A lot of good information there. You can go to it uh, and get a lot more information on it. Uh, short sales and stuff. So why should you listen to me? Okay, well, let me give you my background and what I've done in real estate. Um, you know, I've learned a lot and I learn from the best, both local and national experts. I research a lot. I do a lot. I make a lot of money. I like processes and I follow and I like following procedures. You know, I make step-by-step -step procedures. You know, I've got an hourly realtor that sells my houses. Okay, I've got an hourly rehab manager okay, that uh, follows my checklists and procedures for my rehabs and stuff. I am a full-time entrepreneur. I've got multiple businesses and multiple income streams, okay. My background is uh, chemical engineering and computer science. That explains why I'm so anal. Uh, I retired from my corporate job in 2006 at the age of 42 uh, with it. Um, and let's see. Okay, so make sure my chat is turned on, so. Uh, let me make sure I think, oh, you're right. So very good. Thank you for that. So here's my contact information in here. Uh, yeah, do you uh, make sure that you have it set to all panelists and, and attendees uh, with your questions and your contact info. 
Uh, so set your little drop down arrow to all panelists and attendees. Thanks for that, Mike. And then the three dots to the right of it, you can save this chat. So do that uh, every 15 minutes in case your connection drops and you lose it. Uh, so anyway, you know, I'm an engineer. I left my job in 2006 to homeschool my kids. Uh, then they graduated uh, and went to college. And so it's like, what do we do now? So in 2010, my wife and I became full-time real estate investors. Okay. Uh, and so then, uh, you know, I'm really just a small guy with small companies. You know, my little Realty Renovator LLC buys and rehabs, you know, and sells about five to 10 houses per year. Uh, my claim to fame is uh, all my renovated houses listed under $260,000 have sold in seven days or less at this price or higher for now 10 years. So this may be a great market right now. People talk about how hot it is. You know, for 10 years, my houses have sold in less than seven days because they're drop dead gorgeous. Uh, they're very nice houses. Uh, matter of fact, back in 16, 17 and 18, they sold in two days or less. My typical profit is about $90,000 per house. Now that's because I negotiate and I buy my houses as what are called short sales, okay? That's working directly with the homeowner and the lender. This is not a short sale listed on the MLS with a realtor where you go look on the MLS for a house. No, instead, uh, you know, I work with the homeowner and with the bank directly. Uh, and so my, you know, renovated houses are drop dead gorgeous. Um, I lend out uh, nearly $3 million out of my IRA to other rehabbers. So I'm a hard money lender and to wholesalers. And I've been doing that for about the past six years. Uh, my private lending program is really kind of special because my heart and passion is to help new rehabbers uh, get started, okay, uh, in the business. So I will actually lend you um, all the money to buy the house, all the money to fix the house up, all the money for the points on the loan, and all the money for the monthly interest payments. So you need Zippo in your checking account financially to start rehabbing a house, okay? Uh, in 2018, I started providing one-on-one -on -one real estate coaching, and I developed a couple of uh, half-day workshops on how to calculate the ARV and, and rehab. So, you know, I'm lending money out to people. They bring me their deal, and their deal stinks. It's crap. It's terrible. They, they don't know what the ARV is or the rehab cost is. So I developed some workshops. Then, uh, then I hit the startup, I hit the big time. I hit Hollywood in July of 2019. A local RIA group asked me to do a presentation on short sales, you know, an introduction to massive profits, okay? Uh, and so there was about 150 people in that meeting, largest group they'd ever had in 30 years. Uh, and, uh, and so basically after that, I started providing one-on-one -on -one, uh, short sale real estate coaching and I developed three workshops and, and I do group coaching. So I developed a basic short sale workshop in 2019, an intermediate short sale workshop. And then uh, in uh, February, 2020, I developed an advanced short sale workshop. Um, and so my workshops are meant to teach people everything they know in just the basic workshop. Nobody needs to take the intermediate or advanced. So that's my, that's my history, okay, uh, that's who I am. I'm not going to show you pictures of my boat and my family and my pretty kids or that kind of junk like that. And I'm not going to, you know, tell you, uh, you know, my, what my why is or what your why is. You know, everyone's got their own reason why they do things on it and stuff. And so, you know, I'm just more of a hardcore, let me show you what to do, how I do it, and let's duplicate it and stuff. So uh, I'm going to teach you tonight the basics of short sales. Okay, so let's start out with what is it? Okay, just, you know, what is a short sale? Well, you know, a short sale is when the, the homeowner, you know, which of course, you you know, you hope to become the seller, right? To, to sell you their house. So the homeowner, they owe more than what they can get from selling the house. So they owe more money than what they can get if they were to sell the house. Now, a lot of people get confused and they think that's all about the mortgage. And it's not just the mortgage. Yes, it includes the principal and the interest payments and the penalties of the loan on the house, but it also includes any second loans, home equity lines of credit, judgments, tax liens, you know, any other kind of uh, encumbrances on that home makes that into a short sale, okay? Um, and it's also the case where like the normal sale of a house 
you know, you list it on the MLS, you're going to lose 6%, you're going to have some inspections. So you only get about 90% of list price. So, so many people say they owe 200,000 on their loan and they list the house for 200,000. Well, you still can't even pay off the house because you don't get all that money uh, with it too uh, and stuff. And so um, basically, you know, a homeowner, you know, they owe more than what they get from selling the house. Um, there is usually a pending foreclosure Okay, and they're going to only maybe have 30 or 60 days to sell. So depending on what state you're in, like in the state of Missouri, they actually actually issue two 30 day letters to the people. Um, and so, uh, you know, legally, uh, you know, in Missouri, uh, it's they only have to post that in the county's legal newspaper for 21 days. Texas is 21 days. Georgia's 30 days. Uh, so there are judicial states. Actually, you know, guys, if you're in a judicial state, that's really nice because there you've got two, three, four, five months to do the short sale. Uh, here in, in Georgia, you know, where they only got, you know, 30 days. Now, you don't do the short sale in 30 days, but you stop the foreclosure within 30 days. And so you got to move pretty quick. Uh, but anyway, short sale is, you know, a situation where the homeowner, you know, is going to have a pending foreclosure coming up that really helps cause them to be motivated. A lot of times these houses have deferred maintenance and repairs uh, that the buyer just simply can't afford to fix. They can't put that house up on the market and sell it because it would require someone to buy it and fix it up. And I tell you what, so many people today don't have any money. They're borrowing way over what they can even afford. Uh, you know, home prices are skyrocketing uh, and, they, and, they, and they just, you know, they move into these houses and they basically don't have any money. Uh, and, and the newest trend here, and this is, is really kind of strange, uh, is that, you know, you're coming in now with people paying cash and you're coming in with people that are writing offers with 20% down payment and no uh, financing contingency, you know, no appraisal rider. Uh, and so they're spending every dime they got, you know, uh, for these houses. So it's really hard for a seller that's in a situation where, uh, you know, they can't make the payments on their house due to a job loss or something else, or they owe more than what it's worth. You know, if they can't, you know, fix that house up because the buyer can't buy it, you know, and, and replace the things that are in it that need to be done. Um, and uh, most buyers uh, can't get a traditional loan because the bank won't let them. OK, the approval process takes too long. So, for example, OK, uh, the seller's not going to approve the buyer on a traditional loan versus cash. OK, and the reason is that the, the lender for the homeowner, the seller, uh, doesn't know that the buyer will uh, qualify. So they don't want to tie up the house for two or three months doing an approval process, approving the buyer. Uh, and then have it fail to go through. So therefore, the lender requires the sale of the home to be as is, okay? They, because they don't want the um, seller to spend any money on repairs uh, because they want them to pay the, the bank back. So it has to be a cash offer as is. Very important. You should write that down. As is, cash offer. That's how your contract should be written. Uh, once again, you know, people need to understand that they have to both the lender has to both approve the seller that they qualify to do a short sale and they have to approve who the buyer is, okay? And the buyer can't change. The buyer can't be related to the seller. It can't be the seller's sister, you know, or brother or son or anything. You know, the, the, the seller and buyer cannot be related. Matter of fact, all parties must be unrelated to the seller. Even the title company, the title company can't be related to the seller. Isn't that kind of strange? But that's the that's the um, affidavit that you have to sign uh, in the short sale process. Uh, the lender, uh, you know, is going to require. So there's some notes you need to take down. So many people uh, have said, "Oh, I hate short sales. Oh, I did short sales in 2010. Oh, they lost my paperwork. Oh, they, you know, and all these other excuses and complaints about short sales. See, I've been doing them for 11 years. Nobody sent me the memo to quit doing them. Okay, so I started out in the in the you know 2009, 2010 when they were everywhere, uh, and that was the wild cowboy days. And then now over the you know past five years, 
You know, they've got it very well regulated. And if you know the 300 steps to how to do a short sale, then it's just like that Ocean's Eleven movie with that Oriental guy dancing through the laser beams, getting to the vault, you know, to the prize. Uh, and it's, it's just like beautiful music and you just get your pot of gold, your 50 to $150,000 profit, you know, on each house, you know, $250,000 houses by following the steps that are now very well, you know, regulated with it. And so one of these things is that the lender needs your listing agreement uh, to have a statement in that, okay, uh, that they are basically able to cancel the listing agreement at any time without the payment of the commission. Okay, the banks don't want something to go wrong with the, with the short sale and then have to be required to pay the commission. Remember, the seller has no money. And all this is coming from the bank's proceeds. It's reducing the bank's proceeds. Now, non-FHA loans. So there's, you know, there's a lot of type of loans out there. There's FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, blah, 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 and we can name a lot of others, USDA, on down the road. Well, let's just take our two majors, FHA and Fannie Mae. That's kind of your two big, big ones there, right? Well, on short sales, uh, uh, you know, where the loan, the homeowner's loan is not FHA, okay, like Fannie Mae. So on Fannie Mae loans, the lender will actually um, put a deed restriction on the buyer. Can you believe that? They won't let the buyer sell the house within 30 days for any price. I don't care if your grandmother's in the hospital and you need money immediately and you needed to sell your house for cash to somebody to pay for her emergency procedure. The deed restriction says no go. You cannot sell that house. Very un-American. Uh, and then at 90 days, you can't even sell it for more than 20 percent. OK, then what you paid for the house. So you pay one hundred thousand for it. You can't sell it for more than one hundred and twenty thousand, you know, uh, from day thirty one to day ninety uh, with it and stuff. Um, even if you put fifty thousand in for the rehab, you know, you got to wait, uh, you know, to the end of the 90 days. Now, there are, of course, some ways to get around it. And I'm not going to get into those nuances there and stuff like that, you know, uh, and everything with it. So, um, you know, there's always ways to kind of get around it. Um, I developed a, a method using land trust, just to give you the quick answer on that. Uh, and there's a procedure that you need to use to convince the bank to allow you to do a land trust. And then uh, you can uh, wholesale that off. I know Mike knows about that uh, with it uh, and stuff. And so, um, uh, so now also the lender is gonna require a series of documents. And I kind of put them in uh, just a couple major categories. Uh, one category of documents is, uh, and, and once again, guys, um, if you text short to my phone number, 636-685-2990, I can send you all these slides, okay, uh, with it. Um, and, so, uh, and so just text that uh, to me uh, at any time now, later, it doesn't matter uh, with it and stuff. Um, of course, if you do it at 2 a.m., I'm not going to send you the slides at 2 a.m., but, um, but that's my cell number. You can call me on that number, too. But the major documents that you're going to turn in uh, is an RMA package. That, that's a bank's document that is a request for assistance, okay? You know, it's a government-regulated system, right? And so, you know, they've got forms that you have to fill out. You have to give them two months bank statements, a hardship letter, uh, two pay stubs, uh, and, and it actually will list out, you know, the documents that you have to give. And they have to fill out the, the part about checking the box, I want to do a short sale. OK, and, and, you know, it says, do you want to keep the house? Do you want to do a short sale? You know, those kind of things. Check the box for you want to do a short sale. Uh, and then, you know, you don't have to have a listing agreement. Agreement. I've done many short sales where I don't. I have a series of letters I send to the bank that says, do you really want me to do a listing agreement? Are you really sure about that? Hey, did you know you, it's going to drop your net amount that you get? by about 6%, you really want, and they say, you know what, actually, we don't need a little, so it can be done, but, you know, probably the past three or four years, um, I just have a realtor I work with, and I pay him a, a flat fee of like $500 just to give me a listing agreement. I fill it all out. I, I get everything signed, you know, and I just give it back to the, to the realtor. You know, you can negotiate short sales without being an attorney and without being a realtor. You do not need to be a 
a realtor to do a short sale. You can be a processor of the loan. I don't really necessarily call you a negotiator. The banks don't really negotiate. <laughs> you know, they're a 600 pound gorilla. And they're going to tell you that I have to pay $29,000 for that house I sold for 275. They made me pay $29,000. And I said, well, okay, if I have to, I will uh, with it and stuff. And so, you know, the listing agreement and those documents, um, you know, you can uh, send those in special sale contract. So it's as is cash offer. Remember, there's a thing called a short sale rider, you know, just get with any realtor and they can explain what those forms are. And you got contractor estimates, some comps, and maybe a letter of explanation. Uh, of course, I don't have time to, you know, teach you what all those are in one hour. You know, we try to cover some of these other topics as we go along through the uh, uh, monthly REI USA, you know, uh, meetings and stuff. And so we kind of pick different uh, sections, marketing, documents, and kind of go through those, you know, over time with it uh, and everything. But um, so, uh, so then basically, you know, the key, here's the key. This is almost on a slide all by itself is that the lender is going to do a broker price opinion. That's kind of like an appraisal, okay, but it's done by a realtor and they pay like 50 bucks uh, and it's not, you know, per the whole guidelines, you know, that you would have for an appraisal, okay, with it. And so um, now if you do that FHA short sale, okay, which is nice because they don't have that 90 day deed restriction, but they actually do a full FHA appraisal. Uh, and, and it's probably the houses I make the least amount of money on. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably only making like 80 grand on those houses versus 150,000. So, you know, maybe uh, Fannie Mae, I can make 150,000 on those houses and FHA, I might only make 80, you know, or 100,000 on FHA short sales. Anyway, all this results in what's called an approval letter. This comes from the bank telling you what price you have to pay for the house, how much goes to real estate commission, uh, you know, where to wire the money to, that the uh, that the that those will be reported to uh, the uh, credit reporting agencies as paid at reduced amount. You know, it hurts your credit. You know, very little, uh, and then it gives you 30 days to close. Okay, so you'll actually get an approval letter where you know everything is uh, locked, sealed, and tight and ready to go. All your numbers are done. All you got to do is come to the closing table with the title company. Uh, and, and actually exchange the money and send them wire off. And, and so you can do a lot of stuff in that 30 days, right? Maybe find another buyer to wholesale it to, get your rehab schedule set up if you're going to rehab it, bids and things like that. Now, this whole process here uh, takes, you know, three months, you know, four months, six months, you know, maybe nine months even. Uh, it kind of depends, you know, you, you're in no hurry to get the house. You're going, you're not going to move into the house, right? So there's no reason uh, for you to, um, you know, do this quickly uh, because the longer you take, the lower you get the price. So you start really low with it and stuff. Uh, so you should figure about four months uh, is a good, a good number, uh, you know, to do uh, with it. Um, and let's see here. So, um, so anyway, um, what happens is uh, the lender negotiates the sales price, okay? Uh, and they're actually only looking at the net to the bank. So many people get kind of hung up on what's the list price of the house. And, and that is important from the valuation, but they're looking at the net. So here's a little trick, write this one down. If you're doing an FHA short sale, they will accept 88% of the appraised value, write that down, okay, 88%. So they'll do an appraisal, and if it comes back at $100,000, that that's the value of the house, the bank will accept a net of 88 grand. So that's a little trick, and there's a lot of little tricks uh, with the other lenders too. I don't have time, of course, to go through them because, you know, we do uh, have to do this in one hour. Uh, but uh, once again, if you text short to my number, I can send you uh, all these slides and stuff too. Um, so the lender is going to negotiate, um, you know, uh, with the listing agent or with the short sale processor. So probably, you know, if any of you on here are realtors or anything like that, don't, you dropped your contact info in the chat box. I didn't see if anybody was actually realtors in here or not, but um, 
you know, you may have seen that a realtor gets a listing. It's their sister's house, maybe, right? And they're going to do a listing and it's a short sale. Uh, and normally the bank is expecting that listing agent to kind of process the paperwork, you know, or to assign a negotiator, a short sale processor, you know, is the, is the right word for that, basically. Uh, and so, you know, and realtors just don't like to deal with all of the bank paperwork and all that kind of stuff like that. So they hand it off to a short sale processor. And that's who you are. Okay, you are doing this. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and you're the processor, you're handling the communications with the bank, kind of want to make it really clear here too. Um, I am an investor, I'm an entrepreneur, I am not teaching anybody on this zoom to do this uh, for a flat fee. So if you're a realtor, and you want to start doing short sales for other investors, this is not what I'm teaching, okay? You know, you want to be the investor making the fifty dollars to $150,000 profit. You want to have your entity be the buyer, and you're going to negotiate with the bank on the short sale, okay, uh, with it. Now, I'll make this statement here. It's very important for all parties involved to be unrelated on paper. Now, that's a little catchphrase there in the real estate world. You know, who are you? Okay, you know, I got this all day workshop and I spend like an hour uh, and I even, you know, have this little you know, the song by the who, who are you? And I'm not going to sing it for you because I don't want to do that to you. But, you know, who are you? Who are you? They say it like seven times. And so, you know, you've got like five different parties involved. And, um, you know, if you have an LLC uh, and you sign your, your, uh, your checkbook for the LLC, you're supposed to sign your name comma manager or comma member, uh, you know, or, you know, you might be, you know, comma trustee, or you might be comma, you know, you have different entities. Okay, so that plays a key part in that statement, uh, you know, without going into, you know, the nitty gritty of how you actually set that up. But it's important for you to understand that you don't go to the bank and say, I David Randolph and the buyer, I David Randolph and processing the short sale. You know, that's not what you do. Now, I will tell you, um, you know, they only care about the one simple, one single fact, and they don't want anybody to be related to the seller. Okay, so that is crucial. Okay, you cannot be related to the seller. Uh, now, if they, let's say that you are a realtor and you list the house and, and you also um, are going to negotiate it and you're the buyer. Well, what happens is they make you lose your commission. So your 6% commission goes to zero, okay? So that's, that's you know, usually the worst case on it. Because remember, they're doing an appraisal and a BPO. They know what the house is worth. But for some reason, they think they can just uh, stick it to you and, 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 and remove your 6% commission uh, so that you don't get that money. Uh, I think it's just a spiteful thing for them to do. But anyway, um, you, know, you don't want to be related to the seller, okay, uh, on it and stuff. Uh, and so, um, you know, uh, why do we do them? Okay, you know, the borrower, homeowner, seller, you know, they're going to get foreclosed eventually, uh, if the bank is not paid in full. Now we do short sales, uh, you know, when they have a foreclosure date, uh, before they have a foreclosure date, and before they know that they're going to have a foreclosure date, you know, you can do a short sale, as soon as they've missed one house payment. They do not, and I'm going to repeat, do not need to have a foreclosure date. Matter of fact, the first thing you do if they have a foreclosure date is you have to stop it and then do the short sale. So right now in forbearance, we're actually, you know, as real estate investors, we have a great blessing in this uh, is because there's no foreclosure date. <laughs> wow. So right now my students in short sales are, it's just crazy. There's short, there's, you know, we've got 2.3 million homes in forbearance out there eight times more than than what we normally have 10 times more and people don't realize that they keep talking about a tsunami coming and guys the tsunami's here if you're doing short sales true i understand if you want to get into the foreclosure buying a buying the house at the courthouse steps and those kind of things uh, on on a foreclosure auction or our reo bank owned property on the mls you know that's not what i'm teaching I'm teaching you to buy the house before the foreclosure date to negotiate with a bank to get a very low price on it uh, and stuff. And so, you know, why do you do them now? You know, there's, you know, these are certain things you're going to tell the seller. Okay. So the seller, you know, they're going to have a deficiency and they're going to owe the balance, uh, you know, that 
uh, takes place. If the bank forecloses and sells the house for this low price, the homeowner has to make up the difference. Okay. Now there are some exceptions like the state of Arizona. It's basically, um, you know, a non-recourse type loan. In other words, they can only take the house back. They can't come after them for money. Uh, but most states have some, some type of um, deficiency period of time. Missouri, it's seven years. They got seven years in Missouri to come back and get the money from you. And so you want to tell the seller that. They think, oh, I'll just let them take my house in the foreclosure and I'll just give it up. That's the worst thing that could happen, okay? Because then it goes on their uh, record uh, credit report as a foreclosure, hurts them a lot of points and for you know seven years, uh, and then they still owe all the money to boot. And they get kicked out of the house. That's terrible uh, and stuff. And so uh, you know, when we do a short sale, you know, why do them? Why does the seller do them? Okay, well, we actually can get the bank to pay them maybe a $1,500 to $3,000 check at the closing from the bank itself. Okay, it's called a seller incentive, uh, or maybe it's called like moving money. Uh, and so where they didn't think they're going to get anything because they owed too much and they couldn't sell it and they get you know zero or have to pay you know pay money in this particular case they're going to get a check and that's a very big reason why you want to tell them to to do a short sale uh and then down here you know it's going to hurt them uh you know on their credit score depending on where they file bankruptcy or foreclosure uh foreclosure is like 300 points for seven years a bankruptcy is like 200 points for five years they're all all bad things with it uh, and stuff. Um, uh, and so, you know, why do them? Okay, so another reason is, you know, they shouldn't go to foreclosure. They should file a bankruptcy. Uh, and so that's what a lot of times people will do that. Uh, they want to try to keep the house or they want to try to, uh, you know, make up the payments or they want to, you know, not have that debt on it. See, when you get foreclosed on, um, they can garnish your wages, okay, in certain states. And you give up that right on the foreclosure date. So you actually have to file bankruptcy to stop the garnishment, okay? And, and each state has a, a little bit different rules. We can't go over all of them here. You can always email me or, or call me or text me or something. We can talk about your city, your state, and stuff like that with it. Uh, but basically, you know, it, but if they file bankruptcy, okay, see, people don't understand this. Okay, yeah, we know that it hurts your credit port for five years. But what the bankruptcy attorney doesn't tell the homeowner is that not only do you have this credit report of a bankruptcy, but the bank has to turn around and foreclose. <laughs> yeah. In a bankruptcy, the bank has to foreclose to get legal title to the house. Yeah, they don't owe any money. That's great and that's smart. But now you got a bankruptcy and a foreclosure on your credit report with it and stuff. Uh, and and uh, uh, bankruptcy attorneys don't actually tell sellers that. So you want to try the short sale first and then only file bankruptcy if you can't stop it. Uh, the borrower is going to have to move out prior to foreclosure. They don't actually own the house on the foreclosure date. It's not their house anymore. Uh, and with a short sale, they get to stay in the house the whole time. So three months, six months, nine months, whatever it is, they're not making any house payments. They're saving their money up. They get to live in it. So it's a great deal. As a matter of fact, it's a very good reason to tell people right now that are in forbearance who say, well, but David, I don't have a foreclosure date because of the CARES Act, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm getting to be in my house and, and everything like that uh, and stuff. And then, you know, you point out to him, well, you know what? Uh, that's been going on for 12, 15 months. How much longer do you think it's going to last? Hey, if you start over here with me and jump on the short sale train, I'm going to get you another three months, six months, maybe longer negotiating. And they're like, whoa, really? And so that's a good way that, you know, my students and I have been using to convince the sellers in today's, uh, you know, pandemic type environment to, you know, uh, do the short sale is, you know, get yourself on that so that you're protected from the foreclosure with it. Um, you know, and the other reason why the borrower gets to start over, okay, uh, they get to save their money up while they're in there, while it's being negotiated, and they get to start over with a new house on it. How do we get a check? Very good question. I like that, Philip. So what's going to happen is you're going to be the buyer. You're going to buy the house for $30,000, and you're going to sell it for two hundred seventy-five. You are the owner of the house. So you're negotiating with the bank, and one of your entities 
maybe it's an LLC, land trust, that's a different topic, but you're negotiating for a low price, you're buying the house, and then you're going, hmm, I bought it for $29,000, uh, and it's worth 275. What do I want to do with it? Do I want to do the $80,000 rehab to get the 275? Or do I just want to sell it for 150,000 and do nothing to it? So you are doing it as the buyer, rehabber, wholesaler with that house uh, on it. So that's a very good question. So you're getting your profit when you uh, sell the house uh, with it. Um, so anyway, they get to start over uh, and you get rid of this albatross you know, on their neck. Uh, and everything. Um, another reason is, you know, there, for me, there's a lot of gratification in helping families out. You know, they, they cry at the closing table. They're so happy to get this albatross off their neck. You know, the house, the roof was leaking. There was mold. They didn't have money. You know, they're crying, you know, at, at, at the closing table. I'm crying because I'm going to make $150,000 on this house, you know, when I sell it, you know, and they're crying, I'm crying, we're all crying on each other's shoulders and, and, and they don't care that I'm making $150,000. Okay, they're in a situation that you help them get out of. Okay, they were going to lose their home, they were going to get nothing. Okay, so they're very happy with what you've done for them, you've gotten them money to be able to move. Uh, and stuff like that. You know, we bring up the value of homes and subdivisions, okay? So a lot of times if you want the $150,000 profit on a $250,000 house, yes, I make $150,000 profit on $250,000 houses all the time, okay? With it. Uh, now you're gonna have to rehab that house in those cases. So we bring up the value of homes in subdivisions versus them sitting there now with the homeowner just waiting to get foreclosed and things going downhill and uh, liens get written up, subdivisions, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the government, you know, jurisdictions, you know, putting notices on their door. Uh, you know, we provide lots of jobs, you know, so that's why, you know, we want to do short sales. We help people get jobs and we help, you know, bring up the value of subdivisions. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the big reason is now, you know, this is a taken off the thing in, as a realtor, you know, what, what's real estate all about? What's the most important thing in real estate? Location, 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 right? You heard it all the time. Well, okay, for me, you know, uh, three very big reasons for why you should do short sales. Massive profits, massive profits, massive profits, okay? So I probably should have showed you these slides first. You would have been more interested. I think most of you have hung on still with it. Um, let me just show you why you want to do short sales. So this is a house here, uh, you know, some case example, real life. And you guys can look all this stuff up on public records. Uh, I gave you the address, Google it. Go look it up on public records. You can see everything, what this was paid for and stuff like that. This was a house in a subdivision with a, a, an elderly lady. The subdivision actually flooded. And what happened was, I don't know if you can see my mouse moving, but the, the city didn't have good drainage. And it, it, there's a subdivision up the hill here. And water came down and, and a tree limb busted her basement window. And the basement filled with water, <laughs> okay? Uh, Fern, it, was, it was not, wasn't a walkout either, so it became a swimming pool. She hears this noise in the basement. She goes to the kitchen, takes one step down her steps, and splash, she's in water. Uh, and so this was a house that basically was just totally destroyed. Uh, there was really nothing that she could do. So I did the short sale on this house uh, with it. So, uh, so it's going to be a little quiz time here. And some of you watch this presentation, you'll probably guess the numbers, right? Uh, so what happened was it's a short sale, bought the house. So we're looking at it historically. I sold it for $205,000. I did rehab it, had six offers in two days, uh, you know, five over list. Now this is 2015, guys, not 2020. Okay, I've been doing this, uh, you know, for 10 years. All my houses have sold in seven days or less at list or higher for 10 years. So I'm used to this stuff thing here. Now I did $71,000 uh, rehab on it. So basically, I sold it for 205. Uh, and I put 71,000 into it. How much would you pay for that house? Uh, now it's got to be less than $134,000. Okay. Uh, because uh, 205 minus 71 is 134. So you know, you'd have to pay something less on that uh, with it and stuff. Um, anyway, so nobody threw anything in the chat box. But um, uh, this one's not super terribly impressive. Uh, but you know what, you know, what would you, if you know what you'd pay, go ahead and throw it in the chat box real quick uh, on it. Uh, you know, so if you sold it for 205 and 
uh, you put 70 in it, what would you pay for it? Okay. Well, I pay 33,900. I made a $99,600 profit on that house. Okay. Sold it for 205, put 70 in it and paid 33,900 for that house. Okay. So does that answer the question why? Okay. You want to do short sales? I should have led my presentation probably with these because that really gets people's interest. Okay, let's look at another one, okay? Uh, this is uh, here on Independence Road. Go look it up on public records, okay? So I sold it for $274,000. Uh, I did rehab this one. I'll show you some others that I didn't rehab. I rehabbed it, uh, put in $79,000. Uh, so, you know, what, do you, what would you have paid for that house? Okay, it's got to be less, less than... 195,000 obviously uh, with it. Um, so what would you pay for it? 65,000. I made $130,000 profit on that house, okay? Sold it for 274, put 79 in it and paid $65,000, okay, with it. Does that answer the question why to do short sales? Okay, let's look at another one, okay? Uh, so this one uh, here is, is a pretty big house, okay? Nice house on three acres. Um, I sold it for 389000 I did rehab, but I put seventy nine in it. It's kind of funny as I do these presentations, I kind of notice my rehabs all seem to cost about eighty grand, <laughs> and, and that's because I said they've all sold in seven days or less, right? They are drop-dead gorgeous. Um, I don't really know how to do a partial rehab. I'm kind of not so good with rentals because I put granite countertops in all my houses, okay? You know, even if it's a $150,000 house, uh, you know, I put them in there uh, with it and stuff. Um, anyway, so uh, sold it for 389, put uh, 80 into it. You know, what would you pay for that house? Okay, I paid 168, made $141,000 on that house. Okay, 140, and I uh, put down here, this is my vacation bound house. And I always tear up, you know, every time I talk about this house because, uh, you know, this was a house where, you know, they wired $141,000 to my bank account. And uh, I called my wife up and I said, honey, uh, we closed on the house. Everything worked. We just got $141,000. Uh, you wanted to go to that island for a vacation, that all you can, uh, you know, all inclusive uh, resort uh, and, and, you know, where they feed you and they even give you alcohol. Uh, I said, book it, book it. Now, this was leaving the next day. OK, no, not the next day, the day after the next day. on it. And so we uh, flew to uh, these islands on an all inclusive resort. I had to learn how to drink alcohol because it was free. OK, it was all inclusive, very expensive uh, and stuff. And so this was my vacation bound house uh, here, because if you can't make one hundred forty one thousand dollars and take your wife on vacation, you're, you're in the wrong business. OK, and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, so now. In all honesty, though, or on full disclosure, uh, and I probably shouldn't say this because it ruins the whole story, it was an all-inclusive resort at a real estate conference. So we got to write the whole trip off. So a little bit of full disclosure, it was a, uh, was a real estate conference. We did have to work four hours and one minute uh, per day uh, you know, in, uh, in the real estate conference, but then the whole you know, nine-day trip uh, you know, was a business expense. So I do have some civility here on it and stuff. So does that answer the question? Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, so let's look at uh, this house here. We're gonna have to fly through these here. Uh, and so basically this house was a test. This was a house that I did that didn't need anything to be done with it, okay? The house was not very old at all. It already had granite countertops, already had wood floors. Uh, and as a matter of fact, all I did was finish the basement. You know, I'm a rehabber. I can't sell a house with a concrete basement. I have to finish it. So that's why my rehab cost was $31,000. I wanted to know if I could make a lot of money on what are called pretty houses. Okay, so I'll be re really clear with you right now that you can absolutely do short sales and make a ton of money on pretty houses that don't need anything. Okay, uh, so on this house here, uh, basically, I made $81,000. So this was a test. And I said, I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Uh, and I made $81,000 on that house. Does that answer the question why? Okay, let's look at uh, look at one here. Okay, so this house, uh, 
Basically, I put $2,200 in it. I fixed some squeaky floors. So I wholesaled this house for $240,000 in cash, okay, uh, with it. Uh, you know, what would you pay for that house? Okay, I made $80,000 wholesaling this house. Uh, the $2,200, you know, uh, holding cost was just because you, you know, are closing on it and reselling it. Uh, I was not assigning the contract. I did fix the squeaks in the floor made $80,000. So you can do this on any kind of house. Let me be really clear. This is not hoarder houses, trashed houses, cat pee house. Yeah, those short sales are great, but you can do them on pretty houses. Okay. So does that answer the question why to do them uh, and stuff? Uh, anyway, um, so, you know, here's, uh, here's one I kind of talk about a lot that I think is interesting. You know, uh, one I did in 2020. Um, I bought it for 29000 uh, sold it for 275 I put 80 in it. Made 165,000 on it. Let's take a case here of FHA because uh, FHA is the ones you're going to make, make the least amount of money on. Okay, with it. Uh, and so this FHA short sale, I, uh, you know, um, bought it for 104,000. I put 36 in it. Sold it for 202. I made 62,000 dollars. You know, on an FHA short sale uh, with it. Um, and so that, you know, it's answer a question, okay, where well, we don't have all night. So let's get moving on here. Uh, so now if you guys want a free document, you know, we do not sell stuff here on RII USA. If you want the, uh, the, the one most important document you need to be able to do short sales, to do what I'm talking about here tonight, um, then text the word short to my phone number on there to 636-685. 2990 and I will give you uh, the uh, one single document you need that lets you do all the stuff that I'm talking about. This puts you in charge of the bank and the homeowner and then you're handling the whole situation with it. Um, as a matter of fact, if you guys uh, text short, I've actually got a uh, much longer presentation and a lot more slides with more detail. What you see are slides that have been removed uh, to condense it to 87 slides, uh, or I don't know how many slides I've got here, but, um, you know, to condense it down, you text short and I'll give you the, the uh, so I was, you know, I told you about making that presentation at a RIA group with 150 people. Uh, that was actually recorded and I can send you that video recording and the uh, slides, the expanded slides for those, you know, if you text short to me, no charge, I'm not going to ask you to pay for anything with it, um, but I, it'll give you a little bit more clarity if you're sitting here going, oh, I wanna know more, I wanna know more. You know, I, I just only have one hour uh, with it and stuff. Um, anyway, so, you know, how do you find them? So we're gonna kind of fly through these, okay, with it. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of have this thing, you know, give me your poor huddled masses yearning to breathe free. You know, the seller, the homeowner, that's who they are. These people are in trouble their hearts are heavy. They have financial difficulties. You know, things aren't great for them like they are for us. Okay. You know, things, uh, bad things have happened to good people. Okay. And so you need to reach out and have a heart and to help them with it. Uh, you know, they need to believe that you can help them in some way. Okay. Uh, so marketing, yes, marketing is a big part about how to get short sales. Uh, you know, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? Well, you know, you're not going to get short sales if you don't do marketing, if you don't reach out to those people that need your help. OK, so where are the trees at? OK, uh, you know, uh, I kind of want to point something out. Um, every single foreclosure that happens in America is a failure. Every foreclosure in America is a failure of you not doing the short sale. OK, so just imagine that. Um, there are so many short sales out there that there is more than the foreclosures because if I did five short sales this month uh, and there were, you know, 10 foreclosures, you only saw the 10 foreclosures. There are really 15 out there. So if you see a foreclosure, that's where you, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but that's where you, the investor, failed to step in before the foreclosure and do the short sale. There's no reason for a house to go to foreclosure because the banks do not want the houses, okay? Uh, so, um, you know, in all states, the lender, and this is really key, people don't understand this. All states, the lender is required to post the legal description uh, for a certain number of days 
in what's called a legal newspaper, okay? And my presentation on IUSA last month was for Fulton County in Atlanta. Uh, I showed you how to find that, okay, uh, with it. And it, it's a very crucial one for you to go look for there with it uh, and stuff. And so uh, in every county in America, uh, they have to post this in the legal newspaper. And this is, you know, where they post construction bids, government bids, divorces, uh, uh, probate, you know, it's called a legal newspaper. And so they have to post that uh, in every single county. So you want to do this on a county basis. So let's, let's target those people. So what do we do? Okay. So, you know, these people are desperate because in a certain number of days, they're not going to have a place to live. So, you know, how do we get them? How do we help them? Okay. Everything that the borrower and the lender has tried to do has not worked. Okay. They've tried uh, communication. They've tried sending in documents. They've tried communicating with them. It's not worked. Okay. Uh, and so, um, you know, the seller has got a foreclosure date now, and so they're willing to provide anything needed to stop that foreclosure, okay? You know, they're, they realize that, well, man, this is the last straw, you know, and so they're willing to provide you anything. Now, they don't like the banks, and they won't provide the bank stuff, but when you step in and they see your heart and passion for them, you know, then they uh, will provide to you anything that you need to give to the bank, okay? So the seller doesn't talk to the bank anymore when you start a short sale. Uh, the seller, if they could have found a buyer for the house, they already would have. They would have already listed it for sale, okay? So they, they can't find a buyer, uh, you know? Uh, usually the seller doesn't expect to get any money because that's their problem. They owe more than what it's worth. They can't put it on the market for sale on it. It won't do any good uh, with it and stuff. So they don't actually expect to get any money. Uh, with it and stuff. Um, see, we do have a question here. Uh, do you need the state? Uh, whoops, let's see. How do you, uh, let me, so let me, yeah, I'll, I'll catch a question right now here. Do you need the, the state, the HUD required disclosures? Um, I don't quite follow the wording. The, there is no seller's disclosure from the seller, okay, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, now, um, there is a bank disclosure. So you, you're gonna come to closing with a HUD. There'll be that approval letter that'll go to the title company. The title company will, will write a closing documents, the HUD statement um, on it. And then both parties will sign. It'll be a normal transaction between the seller and the buyer. It's just that the lender has turned in a payoff figure so low that you, know, you can now actually close on it um, and then pay the lender. Uh, with it and stuff. So if I didn't quite answer your question, uh, Philip, go ahead and restate exactly what are required disclosures. Uh, the, the bank does have one and it says, nobody's related to the seller, right? And you sign it. That's their only disclosures, okay, with it. Um, see, uh, Mark's got a question in Georgia. I thought you can't do the short sale. You would need an attorney, a broker, or the homeowner to call and submit docs. Please care, clarify. Yeah, it's absolutely wrong. The entire state of Georgia anybody uh, can negotiate, process a short sale. The only two states is Florida and California. In Florida and California, you have to work through an attorney, through a realtor, uh, you know, and, and so you have to kind of, you know, do your little entrepreneurial thing and kind of, you know, tell the realtor, okay, realtor, uh, here, here's how you dispute. You know, log in on your account, Mr. Realtor, and I'll tell you what to say. So and even in California and Florida, you can get around it. But in Georgia, absolutely not. Okay, anybody uh, can. Uh, and then, so text the word short, okay, to my phone number, and that will give you the document that will let you, Mark, do them in the state of Georgia. Okay, that's what that document will let you do uh, with it. Um, also, do you know how to get the right contact info for the bank? Yeah, that's really super simple. Uh, what's going to happen is um, you're going to have the seller fill out an authorization form, and then on it, it's going to ask for the 1-800 customer service phone number from their mortgage statement. Matter of fact, I like to actually get a copy of the mortgage statement just to make sure that the phone number is written down correctly. And so what you do, uh, Mark, uh, you know, with that is, or sorry, Philip, uh, is that um, you call that 1-800 customer service number and you say certain things to them uh, that they give you, well, you tell them, 
I need the fax number or the email address to send in an authorization form, okay? Uh, and that's exactly what you say to the customer service. And uh, then they give you, uh, and I, I suggest you ask for the email because that lets you send color pictures in later. Fax numbers are, you know, you can't send in color photos. So uh, they'll give you an uh, email or a fax number to send in the uh, authorization uh, form. Uh, and then from there, uh, once you authorize, and that's a whole another thing on what you do there. But, um, you know, but basically, um, so uh, moving, continue on with this here. They don't expect to get any money. Uh, so now everybody's goals are aligned, okay? The bank wants to get this gone. The seller wants to get this house gone and the debt away from them. And you want to make fifty to $150,000 profit. We're all lined up, you know, in agreement, right, on this uh, and stuff. And so, um, you know, you know, how do you get them? You're going to tell them that you can get them much more time to live in the house. So these are things you want to know and understand and to be able to tell the seller, you know, that you can give them much more time to live in the house, you know, with no payments. They're not going to be making any payments. They're not able to make those payments. Uh, you know, you have methods, uh, you know, to satisfy the lender's requirements. In other words, you know what the bank wants, the documents and how to turn them in, okay, to the bank uh, with it. And, and, the bank can't get away with shenanigans because, you know, you're a third party, you know, uh, expert, if you will. And so they know they can't get away with things. They'll get away with all kinds of crap with a seller, with a homeowner. OK, uh, that's why they lose their documents. You know, the homeowner doesn't know what the guidelines are. Uh, but as you, the entrepreneur, real estate investor, you know, you 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 will know uh, what those are. You won't know them in the next you know one minute. My gosh, we're running out of time. I have to hurry up here. Uh, with it and stuff. Um, and so uh, you're and so you're willing to uh, get, you know, the, get everything from the borrower that the bank needs, like those bank statements I talked about, those pay stubs, you know, you go to the homeowner, or you send your assistant over and you get those from them. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you have a buyer for the house, cash as is. Very, very important, guys. This is a key. This is not traditional real estate listing a home and some retail buyer with a Bank of America approval letters by no you are buying it cash as is on the purchase sale contract okay um, you know you're going to get the seller money to move you know 90% of the time there are some exceptions to that uh, with it um, you know don't have time to go into the you know few exceptions that there are uh, you're going to get the bank paid off the seller gets rid of the debt forever this letter will say they owe nothing forever, and then you're, you as a buyer investor is going to own a house, okay? Uh, now, uh, an example of uh, you know, how you find them, this is the example for the state of Missouri. This is the website you go to uh, for St. Louis, Missouri uh, with it. Um, you, know, you have to know what that is for your county. I did it for Fulton County. Uh, on it. Um, in my uh, basic workshop, all day workshop, you know, we do it for your specific county with it. But this is where you go to the legal newspaper in, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri to get them. Uh, so text short if you want to find out uh, more how to use the internet to get the names and addresses, you know, once you go to that website. So I, my bigger presentation that I'll send to you when you text the word short will have instructions on how to do this. Uh, you know, specifically once you get there. Now, your website for your county will be a different website, but the procedure of how to get the names and addresses will be the same, basically. So, 636 uh, 685 2990. I'll send that to you for no cost. What now, how do you reach them? Okay, so I'm gonna have to hurry up here. Uh, so, you're gonna mail them a letter and you're gonna tell them you wanna buy a house. This is kind of important, guys. This is especially in today's age with wholesaling and, and legal stuff and, and a lot of other things coming out with wholesalers being restricted. When you say you're the buyer, you have legal standing. So I want you to mail them a letter. Tell them you want to buy their house. Uh, mail them a letter that says that you can help them. Tell them you can avoid foreclosure and save their credit. Uh, tell them, you know, uh, that um, you can help them find options that are best for them. Don't just send them a letter and say, hey, David said, I'm going to make 50 to $150,000 profit on, on your house. Would you let me do a short sale? That's not what you say to them. They need to know that you're there to help them. And, and, those, and those options 
there are many options that could take place. They might not be a short sale. And so if it isn't, that's okay. Help them out anyway. They'll tell their friends about you, okay? Uh, you know, you'll get to the conclusion that it has to be a short sale because of the facts that take place. Tell them there's no out-of-pocket fees. They're not paying you anything. Never, ever, ever, ever accept money from the seller to help them with a short sale. Uh, you know, that is bordering on loan modification. You're not a mortgage broker. You're not modifying their loan. So do not let them pay you. Um, you are not um, a loan modification officer, okay? Um, let them know that, um, that you pay cash as is. So, you know, a lot of times they've talked to the bank and the bank is, you know, saying, well, look, you know, uh, you're not going to be able to fix the house up. You're not allowed to fix it up. Uh, and so you got to find a cash. So let them know that you are a cash buyer, you are an as is buyer. The house you know, doesn't have to have anything done to it. Uh, and then tell them the sooner they call, the more options they have. That's really important. You know, mail them a letter, let them know the foreclosure date, okay, uh, with it. So, um, so once again, this is part of a bigger presentation. I've got this script uh, that we would go through. I don't have time, obviously now, because we're already out of time, uh, but you know, text short to me and I can you know, send that to you. Uh, you know, um, uh, later with it. Uh, and so, you know, um, tell them that, um, you know, that they're not going to net uh, as much as the sales price if they try to list it. You know, you've got real estate commissions, inspection costs, fees and stuff. So whatever they list the house for, they're going to get less than that. Let them know that. They don't always understand that. And then here's, this is really important, guys absolutely let them know you intend to make a profit so they know what your motive is. Here's what I tell them, okay? This is going to sound strange, okay? You know, as I tell them, I say, hey, look, you know, my goal, okay, is to buy your house for $1 and to fix that house all up really nice and sell it for a million dollars. Now, if you're not okay with that, that's okay. I can go away. That's, and if you're not okay with that, that's fine. You know, you can let the house go to foreclosure. It's all right. If you, if, if you don't want me to, to help you, let it go to foreclosure. That's okay. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You know, I don't want it to go to foreclosure. So they need to know, okay, uh, what your motive is. Now, be very clear, though, that there are options that they can do. The short sale is only a branch that leads down to the only option left. Okay, but they need to understand what your goal is, you know, for this. Why are you doing this for free? On uh, And some you win, some you don't. Some, you know, they get to keep the house, okay? Uh, and that's okay. You win some, you lose some, okay? And that's exactly what you tell them, as long as they know what your, your actual motive is with it. Uh, so in summary, uh, you know, you can, we're only five minutes over. Uh, in summary, you can make a lot of money negotiating short sales directly with the bank as an investor. It's your 50 to $150,000 profit. Okay. You're not doing it for a flat fee for a bunch of other people with it. You can help families out of a crisis that is still occurring today. And actually in reality, it's actually happening in tenfold today because of the pandemic. Uh, here's a big one, guys. There's no competition from other buyers, okay? Uh, are you tired of having other buyers uh, putting in competing offers on the house? Here's another one. There's no competition with the seller. The seller does not care what the price is. The seller does not care what the price is. Where do you ever have that take place at? Nowhere, but with a short sale. So no other buyer can put an offer in. It's not allowed. You're the only buyer. The seller doesn't argue with you what the price is. Okay. Matter of fact, I have this little thing I do with them uh, that basically I, I have them tell me, would you like me to go lower on the price? And they usually say, yeah, can you turn in a lower offer? Uh, and there's a reason why we do a low offer. I don't have uh, time to explain that. Now, pre-pandemic in St. Louis, Missouri, um, in my world of St. Charles County, there were 40 foreclosures a month, okay, pre-pandemic, okay, January of 2020. In St. Louis County, so everyone knows where St. Louis is, there were 300 foreclosures a month before the pandemic, okay. To give you a perspective of what we're in right now, in 2009 and 10, when we had the last, you know, problem with uh, mortgages uh, and people behind on their payment, there were 3,000 foreclosures a month, okay? That's where we're at today. The only thing that's different is 
the CARES Act forbearance forbids the bank from actually doing the foreclosure part, but every single one of those people is still a short sale. Okay, I had a student last month uh, who bought a house for $29,000 that they're changing the carpet. That's all they're doing and they're selling it for 125,000. Student I had two weeks before that bought a house for $24,000 is putting 30 in it. So he's got 54 in it. He's selling it for 150. This is today's market. The banks are dumping the houses. I'm gonna repeat this. You turn an offer into the bank and they're dumping the house because they can't do anything on their own. They can't foreclose and bring that house into their possession to sell it, to get the loan off of their debt, uh, the, the loan off their books. Okay. See, when they get the loan off their books, they can turn around and, and loan out 10 times that amount. Okay. Uh, and so they will willingly take a loss on that with it. Uh, so, you know, how many do you need? Look, guys, you know, I do one short sale a month, you know, 10, five to 10 a year. Okay. I make 50 to $150,000 profit on it. There's, uh, you know, 40 or 50 every single month in St. Charles County itself. Okay. I only need one that leaves 39 others for people. If you're in St. Louis County, 300 every single month. Okay. So there are, and now there's five to 10 times as many right now. Uh, and stuff. So anyway, that's kind of the conclusion. Uh, send me an email here if you want the slides. That's my website, thedavidrandolph.com. You can get more information there. Uh, and, um, you know, you can uh, also, you know, uh, fill out a form to get these slides on my website and a presentation, a longer video presentation, uh, where all I had to clunk these down to just a little short sale text the word short slide, there's more slides that filled in that spot and you get more information. Uh, you can also get that one crucial document that you need in you know, any state, you don't have to be the realtor with it. So that's kind of the uh, end of the, the presentation here. Uh, I'll, uh, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, go ahead and throw them in the, in the chat box. Uh, and, and otherwise we'll you know, end the presentation here in a minute or two, I'll give you a chance to throw anything in there, any comments you have, you know, bad presentation, good presentation, uh, whoops, your mic was turned off, we didn't hear anything you said, you know, something like that kind of thing on it. Um, nice to meet you too, Philip. I'm glad you're an engineer. You would be very good at short sales because we like to follow procedures and it's all a procedure with it. Uh, Vali, thank you for that comment. You know, any specific questions, you know, you can also, uh, you know, uh, email me uh, also, uh, you know, with questions um, on it, um, you know, uh, if, especially if you're working on one, you know, definitely, you know, let me know if you need some help um, on there. Um, I got resources on my website, thedavidrandolph.com with it. Um, so anyway, if there's uh, no uh, specific questions here, then we'll go ahead and uh, call it quits for tonight. Um, I hope you guys uh, consider short sales as a method to uh, be successful in uh, your real estate uh, career uh, on it um, because it will change your life like it has for me. You know, I talked about all that money that I lend out and it all came from short sales. And I will point out guys, that actually is money that my wife didn't spend. That's how it gets into your IRA account, right? You know, if your wife doesn't spend it and it's and I sneak it into the IRA. So short sales are a great way to help families out. Um, and so, um, Definitely let me know if there's anything I can do to help you guys with it. Um, so this is David Randolph, uh, super group leader for the Short Sale Profits Group. Uh, please tune in uh, in about a month on the fourth Wednesday. This is a special session tonight because I'm going to uh, mastermind. But it's normally the fourth Wednesday at, 7 p at, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Fourth Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, every month and do check out my uh, recordings that we already have. So thank you guys, good night, and we will uh, talk to you later.